Welcome back to another episode of Robo CNC. I'm Marcel. Today we're gonna machine some aluminum, the gantry side of the Robo CNC X2 router. So basically this part here you see here. Okay, let's go to the workshop. So welcome back in the workshop. Um, I think this is uh, the first time you see this uh, this vise, a new vise I use uh, used especially for this project. Or maybe you did see it, but then you follow me on Instagram. Uh, by the way, if you do not follow me on Instagram, go to Instagram and follow me, of course. <laughs> um, but uh, well, this uh, this vise is the Vertex uh, VMC4L, which is uh, the L series of the standard four-inch vise. And the L series is the, the long version of the 4 inch vise. So basically, this uh, is uh, 4 inch wide or uh, 108 millimeters wide. Uh, and if you open the vise uh, to its maximum position, you can open it to 210 millimeters. Um, and of course, as you will always see, uh, I needed 230 millimeters, <laughs> so I had to change the the vice jaws to the to the other side. So that's what I'm doing here: gleaning the vice jaws and putting them on the on the back side, so I can uh, use the full 230 millimeter material. Deburring the edges of this uh, big piece of aluminum 150 millimeters by 230 millimeters and 25 millimeters thick. Uh, I get this from aluminiumshop.nl uh, and it's the aluminum uh, 6082, which is uh, about equivalent to the 6061 T6 that's um, commonly found in the US. So I first uh, laid down uh, a piece of scrap aluminum sheet and this is just to raise the material just slightly. Um, I do have to drill some uh, through holes uh, if you look at uh, the gantry sides but the gantry side is going to be 20 millimeters thick and this uh, material is 25 millimeters thick so uh, the through holes will just not be through holes when drilling. Um, they will become true holes when I machine the other side. So uh, that's not where the, the plate is for. Just to get some more clearance uh, above the vise. After aligning and zeroing the material, it's time for the first operation. The first operation will be facing the aluminum. Um, I will do this with the Seco face mill, 40 millimeters in diameter, and it has four inserts. So now the material is flat and it's completely parallel to the machine bed. Uh, next operation would be drilling into this material, but before we start drilling, we're gonna spot drill. Uh, spot drill is just a, a really short drill to set some center points. Uh, this prevents the, the long sloppy drill from uh, yeah, walking around on the material. Really, I love CNC. What if you had to do this by hand? <laughs> Cranking all the shafts. And... So all the spots are set, so it's time to drill. Uh, we have some uh, 
different hole sizes, but I'm gonna start with this one. I'm using some uh, WD-40 as a lubricant, and this works as a charm for, for uh, aluminum work. As you can see, I am using pack drilling, but my packs are quite long, so the drill is going down quite a bit before it stops for a while, and this uh, results in quite some long chips that clog up the drill bit. Um, well, it works for now, but I could improve on this, on this recipe. Um, I'm using the plastic piece and the brush to uh, break down these, uh, these chips in some smaller pieces to prevent them from uh, leaving all kinds of scratches on the material. So, after the drilling comes the milling. Um, an 8mm end mill is used uh, here to make some pockets. Uh, on the left you see two big uh, pockets. Uh, well, not pockets, they are true holes. Uh, for the cables later on and the slot I'm making now uh, is going to be used to uh, put in another piece of aluminum and this other piece of aluminum will be for mounting the carriages so bas basically this is what uh, what squares up the, the gantry to the x-axis or the bed of the machine Well, let's speed up this process. So after some measuring and uh, taking some spring cuts, it's time to fit the piece. And it fits great, it's really, really tight fit. Just how we want it. I love it. So now time has come to give this uh, square shape um, its final shape by milling its uh, contour. I'm using the same 8mm uh, uh, end mill that I used to make the pockets with. And again I'm uh, taking it quite slow. Um, I don't do this every day, I'm not really used to machine these parts and don't want to make any mistakes. As you can see, I'm really, really close to the vice jaw here. Um, there were some scary moments, but this is uh, measured and clearance is clearance, even if it's only one tenth of a millimeter. I've uh, measured it, of course, before I started this run. Um, this is also the reason why we use the, uh, the scrap material at the bottom uh, before we put the block into the vise. On the front, you see we hardly uh, reached all the material or we did not completely uh, reach all the material um, this is the last pass and it's one tenth of a millimeter um, width of cut so most of it still cleans up uh, at this pass but um, some was still left uh, it's not a big deal because uh, there's no reference on this side of the, of the part so you're uh, just purely aesthetical. Now the job I love the most, chamfering all the corners and the edges. I really, really like to look at this one. Just cleaning up all corners.
well, both of the gantry sides are uh, finished on one side. I think they turned out great and they uh, they look nice. Um, still, in the bottom there is about uh, four millimeters or uh, of uh, material that needs to be uh, machined away. So I'm uh, gonna place them in the milling machine again and uh, face off this material. So it's time to machine the other side. So it can be uh, placed back in the milling vise, but this time we do not need the spacer because we're staying clear of the vise jaws. Um, I do want to make sure that the vise is completely clean before I put in the material because it needs to be flat um, and otherwise it uh, will not be uh, 20 millimeters all over the complete surface. So making sure the vise is clean before mounting it back into it. So I skipped a few passes just to speed things up. But uh, as you can see I used the Seco 40 mm uh, face mill to uh, remove the remaining material from this side of the part. After machining it uh, to its final thickness of 20 millimeters, uh, it's time to uh, make some recesses for the bolt heads. Um, so pockets, which I do with the 8 millimeter end mill again. So chamfering all the sharp corners and uh, sharp edges again. And that's the last operation for this part. So this is how the parts turned up. Uh, I think they look great. They will function great. I'm still going to bead blast them. Um, after which you will see them in the next video. Hope you liked the video. If so, give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and hope to see you next time in this uh, router build. Thanks for watching.